Oh, that's a handsome man. Get a little strip tease there as well, eh? Cow passion. That's my coolest t-shirt, by the way. Now, get it, it's supposed to say compassion, but the aim has fallen down and it says cow passion. Huh. Never mind, that's how it <laughs> What? Makes sense. Uh, maybe the aim and the double guy, no, that's quite clever. But, uh, <laughs> I can't wait, what mate, did... but I didn't realise it was, I uh, reckon, see it now. What did, did you think? I, I can't, okay, I, just, I didn't care why you put the W's in there, but I, no, the M didn't have here, I get it, I can just say though. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, no, Graham Farm, So it was only um, literally last week that Graham realised that the hoof GP is my initials, as in Graham Parker. <laughs> I thought you meant like a doctor. I did mean like a doctor. <laughs> I didn't realise that. Right, that what? Until you say that. It's kind of obvious. <laughs> He's a special kind of something, so we're at a farm right down in the, the southern tip of Scotland literally as far south as you can possibly go. We're actually further south in some parts of England, believe it or not. We've got about, it's a beautiful day actually. We've got about 30, 30 cows to do and we've got nine big bulls to do. We're kind of trimming through this crush today, which is the farmer's crush. And we're gonna struggle to get the bulls through this. So it might be a bit of a mission towards the end of the day. And then I'm headed to Manchester actually. You'll notice Craig is not here again. Craig is really ill. He did turn up for work this morning, but we sent him home because he was just too ill to work to be honest but fair play to him kudos for turning up because uh yeah it's, it's good it's good that he's wanting to be here but at the same time yeah we got that fixed look we got the little screen fixed it was broken last time and then uh, we haven't actually got the proper replacement wire for here but Kev's used a bit of strimmer cable look. <laughs> That's quite clever isn't it? <laughs> anyway these cows are just routine trim so it's really nice and straightforward. Nothing too in depth at all. Nice and easy. Swimming cows feet like this is how you get through a huge amount of cows some days. And then obviously when you're trimming problems, they take an awful lot longer. We always say that if you trim a cow that we have to put a block on, that cow takes at least as long as two routine cows. I mean, that cow's just taking less than two minutes probably. Right. Something that doesn't happen often, look. Stone completely stuck. And you're playing with a guy and take the battery off. Look at that, I got a stone stuck in between the blade. So that's the actual blade that cuts the hoof on itself. And then this is the disc. Basically, those blades, those inserts, as we call them, get changed all the time. And sometimes, very rarely, a stone will get stuck in it completely like that, look. And they're usually not all that easy to get out. There we go. They're actually made of tungsten carbide, these, these little inserts. They're designed for cutting metal, which is why they're so good at cutting hooves. Hooves, 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 hoof horn, hoof horn. There's where the stone came out, look. A little crevasse, crevice.
a block, please, Kev. A small wooden one. There you go for Kev. I actually thought that was just going to be a really small dog one, but it looks like it's going to be something that's substantial. Yeah, we got a bit old. I've said that before, but all in pleasant company. Oh, these cows are outside all the time, so, well, why wouldn't you be when it's sunny like this? But these cows here actually are out for about nine or ten months of the year. This beautiful weather is perfect for them, and as you can see, the grass is very, very green. Only trouble is, when they're outside all that time, they end up picking up stones on the tracks and things like that. So hopefully this will turn out okay. Definitely a lot deeper. Look, there's more stones. I never thought that was going to be the case. I just tossed them on the floor by accident. I don't think it's going to come to anything, is it? The reason I put a block on, by the way, isn't because it's painful or anything like that. Cow's feet in general should should deal with stones. Sorry, I'm trying to think if this is open or not. It's not open. So you might think, well, why is he put a block on? But if I press this, look, it's flexible. I'll use my knife so that it's flexible. My knife's actually flexing too. But that is really soft and we need this to be intact for the cow to be able to walk on it properly. So that block will be there until this thickens back up to where it should be. And by then, her foot should be able to take a substantial amount of weight. So this will this will be gone in six weeks, and by that time, this will have fully regenerated. Nice. I feel like an old man. I slept the other day at work. You know, sometimes you slip and you kind of catch yourself, but you pull your back. That's this guy right now. Come on. If cows always behaved as easily as the hat, the world would be a better place. Right, we've got about 15 or so cows left to do it, and then, no, we haven't, we must have about 24 to do actually, because there's another load that, so this farm has like, got a couple of farms, and they're going to bring some more from a different farm before we do those bills. Yes, hello. Kev's dealing with a really bad problem right now. Um, Tonicrosis, it looks like. Yeah, I just wanted to say to you guys, so obviously there's been a lot of chat about my book and stuff, and I don't always want to talk on the main channel about things like that, especially like in my private life, because it's like, uh, the book is that. So the book is totally finished, and I want to give you guys an update. So the book is, it's not totally finished, it's being edited properly, but it is 100% being launched this October. And I know it's 100% reading launch this October, which is, that's only like three months away, isn't it? Oh, anyway, because I have already lined up a couple of places to talk about it. It's being launched at the Wigtown Book Festival, which is Scotland's national book festival, and about 200 yards from my house. Well, that's an exaggeration, maybe 600 yards. But yeah, we're gonna launch it first week in October. Uh, we're gonna do a chat in Wigtown about it with an audience. So if you want to get in that, just look up the Wigtown Book Festival. And you guys, I'm not, I'm not telling anybody on the main channel about this just now, but you could look it up right now. Um, I hope you're nervous because I want to tell you what the, what the <coughs> what, I'm stuttering as well, what the title of the book is. So people have online personas. Oh, persona is the wrong word because this is me. This is me. I am happy. I'm go lucky. But people get down and stuff and the book is about my childhood and a lot of weird and wonderful, well not wonderful, but a lot of weird and strange and tumultuous things that happened as I was growing up in mental health and struggles with things like that. So we were gonna call it on my own two feet, but it didn't quite sit with me properly for like the entirety of writing it. So we're gonna call it bruised soul, as in bruised soul, as in things that have happened to you that affect your soul, your inner being, and then you carry them throughout life. But it's also a play on terms because obviously it's souls become bruised, don't they? So it's a bruised soul, but it's also a bruised soul inside yourself. So genuinely, it's a, 
Graham's pointing at me. I take it. I take it. I take it. I take it's bright there. Uh, yeah, can you see? You just look like a silhouette. <laughs> so basically, yeah, it's, we're gonna call it Bruised Soul. Let, genuinely, I need input because it's not set in stone. Um, what the name is, but I kind of like it because it, it displays a side to me that a lot of people don't really see. Um, yeah. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Look how sore this is. Look. I'll take it off you, Graham. Let's see. Ouch. That is a sore foot. Oh. No wonder she was limping. She was, she's easily the lamest cow here today. Um, in fact, she's probably the only one that's properly lame and she's actually, her eyes look a little bit sad, don't they? Look? Ah, you'll be all right, love. You'll be all right, you'll be all right. Problems like that do take quite a lot of getting over, obviously. Um, the blood isn't necessarily a bad thing because it was already open when Kevin when Kevin lifted the foot up. But uh, yeah, so one for her. Got a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like I said earlier, these are from a different farm, so. The mixture of cows that have got slightly longer feet and maybe a couple of lame ones. Hopefully nothing too bad. <laughs> and we need this. Over the years, you break a lot of things when you're working with cows. Big, strong animals. So you learn pretty quickly that you need to really fix things as well. And uh, for some reason, they've managed to snap or lose a bolt somehow out of this. Oh! This little bolt here is meant to go through here, link up to the other one, and hold this in place. But the little bolt out at the end of that snapped. So we've had to raid the farmer's supplies and see if one of these will work out. That one's probably going to be the strongest, isn't it? Oh, you've got full threaded on the base. Do you think it'll hold it? You'd better use that one. It's a uh, chromium. Yeah. Unfortunately, you have to take the thing off, though, won't you? Oh, oh aye. Sorry, if you take that lock nut off, that's why I brought that. So these have got a uh, ny nylock nuts on the end of them, and it'll stop it from rattling loose. Okay, I'll fix it. It's just a bit, a bit like Jim will fix it, aren't you, mate? It's all right though, because Graham was desperate to make us a coffee, weren't you, mate? Oh, I couldn't wait, though. Yeah, <laughs> you could. I couldn't wait, is what he said. <laughs> you guys actually understand what Graham says. We are getting there. <laughs> Some selling video no came to us, eh, What? Man, Craig's video is like... Oh, yeah. Graham watched a video back of himself, and he himself had no clue what he was saying. <laughs> what are you saying? Right. 
It's got the thread. Oh, okay. Oh, well. Just use the eye. I thought maybe they were slightly thicker. Uh, no, it's not. Right. That washes and everything, doing the job right, mm. makes a change to it. Didn't you put one on the other side? But, uh, I didn't think you had, I thought you'd just fast forwarded that bit. Just for the camera. Just for the camera? Yeah. It looks good though, doesn't it? That's it. <laughs> Unlike yourself. In my opinion. <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Mm. See that? Beauty is in the beholder. What is a beholder? <laughs> I don't really understand that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, beauty, I, I mean, it sounds good. Beauty is in the, the eye of the beholder, but are you the beholder? Or is that like the person uh, looking no, at yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that you're saying me, I don't know. Mm -hmm. He's doing that thing, didn't he? Remember the key for these? No fear. He'd be like, is it fear is in the eye of the beholder or something? You remember that? I can't see if you're taking a piss at me. I'm not wearing that car. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yeah, moving on. Yeah, be, no, it's just a bit long, long, isn't it? Trouble is now that bit that Kev's got his thumb on will stick out into not into the car. That's fine, but into the side of the crush and destroy the side of the crush. Mm, we've had it before. It'll be okay now. Be okay for today. Goes in. Yeah, it does go in a bit, doesn't it? I don't know if that'll stay on. Push that green button on, please, Bill. You get it fairly tight. Why oh, you put another one on, eh? Yeah, that one's not going to. Ah, right, okay. Even if you can get it onto the end to stop it from wrecking uh, inside the crush a bit, that might help a bit. You actually could, yeah. You were joking, weren't you? <laughs> remember I said earlier on that those the the inserts and in the grinders, these inserts here, are actually designed for cutting steel. So we actually uh, could, believe it or not. I'll need to change the blades. Eh? Then I'll need to change the blades, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that'll do, Kev. Let's see. Oh, it's not... No, uh, it's got a fair bit of space. It'll bang off it a little bit, but... You've had longer than that, have you? Can we leave your personal life out of this, please, Kev? <laughs> I'm talking about what? Trimming bills are horrible in a way. They're so big they can hurt themselves so easily. So as soon as you get them in, you want them back out. But this guy has got a real problem, I think. So first thing we do is get a block on them. If we 
he's got the block in position and everything goes wrong and we have to let him out. At least he's got the block in. And that's us done for the day. Well, kind of. This is our furthest away farm. We're actually only about, as the crow flies, about six miles from home. So it'll take us about 45 minutes to 50 minutes to get home because it's our, the way of the world. And then I'm off to Manchester to see Kev's little brother with uh, Ashley and the kids. So Manchester's a cool city. If you've ever been, no, if you've never been, you should go because it's great. Right, thank you for watching this episode of Behind the Hoof. Catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye, Graham. Bye. Bye.